that voice on layaway. <laughs> it's good to see you all this evening. Thank you, first and foremost, for another opportunity to have a conversation with you. A conversation that will definitely touch both of our hearts. A conversation that we both can learn from. We pray that this conversation that we have with the Lord not only edifies him, but it edifies one another. Uh, we have the opportunity to continue in our theme of reconciliation. And what I want to talk to us today is about the means, the goal, the aim of reconciliation. Sometimes we lose sight. Sometimes we lose touch in the fact that reconciliation is not only a process of God, but it is a process that benefits us as children of God. The particular text we will be able to dive into together is Genesis 33. The verses we will be reading will be from 4 to verse 10. But I will read from, from Genesis 33 verse 1 into your hearing. And the Bible says, Now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the other two maid servants. Verse 2 goes on to say, And he put the maid servants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. That is from least to greatest. Verse 3, then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. Verse 4, but Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept just for historical uh, admonishment. Esau wasn't supposed to do that according to customs. As the older brother, I mean, excuse me, as a younger brother, uh, Jacob was supposed to worship his older brother, but Esau was not supposed to run to him and kiss him and show him the love of God, quote unquote. Let's keep reading. And he lifted his eyes and said, or saw the women and children and said, who are these with you? So he said, the children of whom God graciously has given your servant. Then the maid servants came near. They and their children bowed down. They repeated the pattern that Jacob has just shown them. Verse 7, and Leah also came near with her children. They bowed down. Afterward, Joseph and Rachel came near, and they as well bowed down. Then Esau said, what do you mean by all this company which I have met? And Jacob said, these are to find favor, favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, no, please, he repeats it. If I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand. Inasmuch as I have seen your face, as though I have seen the face of God, and you are pleased with me. My title along this evening, my title along this evening is Targeting My Salvation. My aim is to please. As a child of God, we must embrace the divine reconciliation in order to act in the process of reconciliation. I want us to be introduced to understanding that wherever there are people, people will be people. So reconciliation is not confusing people, or, or excuse me, reconciliation is not confusing, people are confusing and perplexed in nature. I'll repeat that. Wherever there are people, people will be people. So reconciliation is not confusing, people are confusing. Reconciliation is not by us. It is with us, it is worked through us, and it is for us if we utilize the doctrine of reconciliation in our lives to glorify the Godhead and if we use it to add to our faith. 
2 Peter 1 through 5, Sharif says, uh, 1 verse 5 says, For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. Goodness. From goodness, knowledge. From knowledge, self-control. And self-control, perseverance. From perseverance, godliness. And godliness, mutual, mutual affection. And from mutual affection, we find love. So whether we have been offended or we are the offender, we must spiritually comprehend that God is regenerating his work through both parties involved simultaneously. Thanks be to God for when we were still without strength, the father sent his son to die for the ungodly. Why? So he can propitiate or satisfy himself in the way that he sent his son, Jesus Christ. So what I'd like to talk to you about, my only point for the night is the aim. The aim as in our aim, to please God and to please other people. Not to say that we are stuck in having to please people no matter how they treat us. What I'm saying is the way we have a relationship with Christ behind closed doors, that reflects in our relationship with people. So the less we are able to have a relationship with people, to understand that people mess up too, to give people the benefit of the doubt, that will reflect our growth in faith. So, the aim of reconciliation is to find favor in the sight of the Lord, acknowledging the fact that Christ, the mediator, the one in which we offend as imperfect people, found favor in us first. See, this is what allows us the opportunity and ability to give and offer favor to others because Christ found favor in us first. We often are silent on the fact that Isaac blessed Esau as well. We only highlight in this particular text, Jacob stealing the birthright and the blessing. If you would, can you turn to Hebrews 11.20? It's a short verse. I would quote it, but I want you to see it for yourself. That Isaac not only blessed Jacob, but he also blessed Esau. The word of God tells us in Hebrews 11.20, by faith. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. And we can refer to this specific blessing in Genesis 27, which is the context of the text we're on now. Genesis 27, 38 through 40. And I'll read that to you. It says, Esau said to his father, Father, do you have only one blessing? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's riches, Away from the dew of heaven above, you will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. But when you grow re restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. That's Genesis 27. This is what Isaac specifically said to Esau. As a child of God, it is hard enough, hear me closely. As a child of God, it is hard enough aiming to please God and other Christians. But we sometimes also try to avoid reconciliation with non-Christians. Reconciliation's aim was to bring two different sides together. Why do you say that, Troy? Where do you see the non-Christian aspect of? Well, let's stop assuming that virtue only comes from dealing with virtuous people. Everyone is invited to the harmonious healing of the Heavenly Father. The divine aim of the father was to use his son, Jesus Christ, as, as a satisfactory sin and peace offering, as Hebrews tells us, once and for all time. Once and for all time. Why? So that he can make two differences become similar. Two sons in sin had to come to one father for a blessing. Only that one father could give them in your personal life. There are two people involved in enmity, in separation, and are far off. Both of them are imperfect people. And we both should be scratching, clawing, and trying to apprehend the grace and favor of God together. But sometimes we, as the offended, we take the assumption that God is not changing the other person, morally or spiritually. Remember a couple weeks back when we were... Uh, talking about this lesson, the other A word we used was assumption. See, once we get rid of our assumption, we can clearly see our aim. 
Jacob assumed Esau was going to kill him. Sometimes we assume that people are going to verbally abuse us. Sometimes we assume people are not going to forgive us. Sometimes we assume the other person is not growing, but we are. Sometimes we assume. When we remove our assumptions, we will be able to follow the aim of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me not forget that point of the non-Christian aspect. Hold on to that for me. Uh, as well, I want you to know this. In your life, there are two personhoods involved. You and God, you and somebody. The you and somebody are probably using the same weapon to target the same struggle. Target the same struggle. The same struggle is enmity. We're both uh, going through war, so we're not at peace. But sometimes, based on our theology and view of God, we use the same weapon to target the same struggle. If you aim with pride, and I aim with preference, who aims to please? If you aim with hostility, and I aim with anarchy, who aims to please? So here's the non-Christian thought I wanted to present. Esau and the Edomites were not in the seed promise or the lineage of Christ. In Numbers, the book of Numbers 20, 14 through 21, the Edomites failed to assist Israel in the wilderness and in their wanderings. We know people like that. As well, in the book of Obadiah, we find the Babylonians invading and destructing Israel while the Edomites watched in laughter. Jacob and the Israelites are of the ancestry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the reconciler. There may be people in our blood family that are not children of God and have yet to respond, but that does not dismiss us, nor does it dismiss Jacob from surrendering a peace party and some prayer. No matter what is going on, it doesn't dismiss us from arranging our peace party or arranging prayer as a means to create either two things. Reconciliation between the person. If I can't reconcile with the person and I have to let it go because of my relationship with God, then I make sure I get right with God in prayer. Amen? All righty. Our aim is to please in our relationships that need reconciliation. So, just like earlier uh, Brother Joshua mentioned, we need a, a, a change of theology. I agree with that. Our change of theology needs to go from pleasing people just for pleasing people's sake to pleasing God by aiming to please people for God's sake. Reconciliation tells us that God is pleased in our patience when we wait on him. No matter what, as we look at this text, we see in uh, Genesis 32, verse 1, first and foremost, Jacob was met by the presence of God. In the Bible, it says, so Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. The presence of God was there to protect him. But also, he sent out messengers after he met with the presence of God's protection, but then Jacob assumed panic and created anxiety for himself. Doesn't that sound like us? Troy, that sounds like you. Sometimes God's answer isn't good enough, so we create anxiety. It's not coming at the right time. The Bible says in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. But sometimes God working in our lives and the pace is not the way we think it should be. After he panicked, after he assumed, after anxiety was created, his faith kicked in. Creating a prayer in verse 11 of chapter 32, it says, deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of my enemy from the hand of whatever is holding me back to glorify you, God. Deliver me from that. From the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother with children. 
Excuse me. So, before we make any plan to aim, we must know our target. Any plan to aim to please, we must pray out of our assumptions. When we have this aim and we pray, we must pray out of our assumptions. We must pray from the accountability that we are reminded of when we read the word of life. We must pray in appeasement to God's will being done and not our own. In 32 verse 20, Jacob sends his three servants out and they have things with them. But he says, behold, he tells his servant to tell Esau, behold, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me. And afterward, I will see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. Aren't we looking to be accepted every day of our lives? Whether spiritually, whether with other people, we're looking to be accepted. We're looking to be loved. We're looking to be known. What we have to do as children of God is to act like we know, act like we are loved, and we have to act like we truly, truly want to get right with God. And if reconciliation is one of the things that we struggle with, we have to fight the good fight of faith and continue to push forward, press toward the mark. Because it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. But the more we talk about how difficult it is, the more difficult it's going to be. This is something I said last week during VBS. You know, the, the less we pray about our situation, the more it will prey on you. So, Jacob sent messengers that gave him assumptions. Jacob sent up a prayer that gave him accountability. Jacob sent servants to appease Esau. That gave him a sense of acceptance. But he still ended up alone. He still ended up abandoned. And he still ended up alienated from the conclusion of our aim. And that seeing or demonstrating the face of God in our situations of war and enmity and being afar off with other people. We need to understand that we are displaying the face of God. It's a good feeling to truly reconcile with someone. Even when you think it's not working, it's a good feeling to trust that God is working. Because ultimately, we see here, Jacob missed out on that particular blessing. He had to wrestle with God for blessing. He, he did all of these different things. He got a blessing from Isaac, but he, he might have missed, he might have missed the, the, the blessing and the process the blessing that we have in the process of continuing to move forward, continuing to trust God. Because at some point he assumed and he panicked and he freaked out. We have to continue to trust God. At that moment that we realize that we have to aim to please by trusting God, at that moment God will show up. Just like he showed up to protect Jacob from restitution, he also came to prepare Jacob for reconciliation. This is why you have the uh, angel fighting with Jacob before we get into chapter 33. God wants to prepare us. This is why it may seem confusing to reconcile with people. This is why it may seem difficult to forgive people because God wants to continue to consume us with his presence, showing us, yes, it's difficult, but I did it. I did it for you. I did it for you, so I can give you the ability to do the same. He prepares us. The preparations produce the ultimate change God desires in our relationship with others. As I conclude, we have been changed, pruned to spirituality from being Jacob's at one point to being Israel's. You're looking at me funny. Troy, what does that mean? Well, that means we have struggled with God, as the word Israel means. We have struggled with God on some things that have took place in our lives. But the power of Christ has brought us back to the cross, brought us back into harmony and symphonio and realization that if we have struggles with God and we have struggles with men, we too will prevail. We too will prevail, just like Jacob. But we have to embrace the divine change. We have to embrace the mountains so that we can continue to have footing in our faith. 
Just like Jacob hip, or Jacob's hip, excuse me, we have out of place relationship with others. We have out of place fellowship with God. We have out of witness partnership with the Holy Spirit. The aim to please started with the Father who placed it in you and in I. The Bible says in Colossians 1 19, 20, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or in heaven. I understand reconciliation is a big deal. It's a big deal for me. I'm still in the process of continuing to make my way back to the East Coast because I got some people to talk to face to face. Here's my, my testimony. When you think, and this is how I'm going to invite us, when you think that God isn't working, I remember the last time I made a testimony to you guys, the letter that I had was from my mom. And she didn't even call me son in the letter. So, so you know this is live. It says on this paper, to hear Troy preach Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Go to YouTube, all of that stuff, where to find it. But she says, hi, Troy. It took me 10 minutes to look past that part. Because the last letter I had a testimony about Sister Davis, it didn't say hi, Troy. It said hi. Necessarily, let's think of it in Luke 15. The, the younger prodigal son, he said, Father, Father, Father. You know, sometimes when we feel like God's not working, he's working. Not necessarily, you know, I was talking about how we treat the non-Christian. You would have thought after reading this letter, and I guess hearing Hebrews 12 so much, she's the, the word play is very like our Lord Jesus Christ. You never know. And I'm not just automatically putting her in the fold. All I'm saying is you never know what God is doing. You never know. And because of that, we should want to keep trying. Just because of that. Because I don't know. And that's how I'm going to invite us. You hear the aim to please because someone had an aim to please each and every soul in the room. Someone thought of each and every name in this room and the people that will come after you. What's interesting is if you fast forward to Obadiah, the Edomites still had beef with the Israelites. But that's too much to preach. But people just don't get it. Reconciliation starts now so we could save me. This is why it starts. This is why we got to close every gap. Young, old, men, women, everything. Everything has to close now. Everything that is divided has to come and become one. Has to. This is the only way we will feel edified. This is the only way testimonies are true. This is the only way scripture truly works. It works. It works. It may not be the person. It may just be you and God. And honestly, I felt like all of my letters, I wrote all these letters, went to school, wrote all these letters, my letters, my letters, my letters. I can imagine God like your letters. Boy, all you got to do is just relax, be quiet, listen, take your time. So, all we have to do as children of God is relax, listen, take our time, because reconciliation is real. It's real, and it has to be celebrated. It has to be celebrated. I could sit and talk to Brother Davis for hours. That has to be celebrated. Brother Curl can trust me to preach a word in it. That has to be celebrated. It has to be celebrated. 
If you are not a child of God tonight, we're trying to celebrate you having harmony in heaven. If you are not a child of God tonight, we became children of God because we believed that the aim to please wasn't on us. We learned it from someone else. And we repent that sometimes we fall short of the pattern. The pattern to keep sending servants. Keep sending our letters. Keep sending our love. Keep sending the fruits of our spirit. Sometimes we fall short. So we repent. And that repentance gives us a clear and undistorted mind so we could confess the sweetest name on modern tongue. Jesus Christ, the one who aimed to please me and you. And those who are far off, he at the right time did what he needed to do to give us an opportunity to live right. Fulfill all righteousness. And if you love God and you're not a child of God and you love him in your heart, stand up for him. Stand up for him. Accept what's already yours. If you are a child of God, stand up for him. Accept what's already yours. The gift that he's given us, the fruits of the spirit that he just wants us to send out. Your peace party. Sorry, I didn't ball my thing up. Your peace party your peace party is valuable. It works. Your peace party works. We just got to humble ourselves. Don't worry about how long. Christ didn't worry about how long. He worried about how much. How much I love you. How much, I have, how much do I have to do to get the guilt off for you? We hold that guilt in our hands. We will, not, we, we will not have room for Christ. Brother Barry, as we stand in our invitation song, I ask us to think, think about our aim to please. Does it reflect Christ's aim to please? Careless soul, why will you linger wandering from the fold of God? Hear you not the invitation? Oh, prepare to meet thy God. Careless soul, oh, heed the warning for your life.